Good morning class. Welcome sa inyong general chemistry 2. So, sa video na to, we will discuss the first topic for your general chemistry 2, entitled, The Intermolecular Forces in Liquids and Solids. So, in this video, we'll have the topics, subtopics, kinetic molecular theory and intermolecular forces with the following objectives. Use the kinetic molecular theory to explain the properties of solids and liquids and describe and differentiate the types of intermolecular forces. We have here the different the three states of matter, namely the solid, the liquid, and the gas. How do we differentiate the three? Let's go over the following. Number one, compare the distance among the molecules in the gas, liquid, and solid and, and rank them in increasing distance between particles. So as we all know, ang particles sa solids ay dikit-dikit or compact as uh, you see here in the um, diagram. In liquids, particles are separated. And in gases, particles are widely separated. So in terms of the distance between particles, the smallest distances are in uh, solid particles. Wider distances between the liquid particles and widest or largest distances between the gas particles. Number two, describe the movement of particles in solid, liquid, and gas. Because there is limited uh, space between particles in solids, uh, there is also a uh, limited movement among the particles. So, ang movement ng particles ng solids ay more uh, appropriately described as vibration. So, because of the limited st spaces between particles, uh, ang, ang tendency nila is to, to, to vibrate. Whereas, in the particles of, between the particles of um, liquids where there are wider particles, uh, molecules are or particles are freely moving. They are able to move freely because there are spaces. In uh, gas particles, there are greater tendency to move. So the movement of particles I mass uh, loose cases sa particles between uh, cases of particles in solids and in liquids. So it's, it has something to do with the spaces between and among particles that the mobility or the movement of particles is dependent on. Number three, describe the arrangement of particles in solid, liquid, and gas. Arrange the phase of mat phases of matter in order of increasing volume and empty space between particles. So as we have mentioned earlier, the particles in solids are compact. Particles in Liquids are separated and particles in uh, gases are widely separated. So if we are to arrange the phases of matter in order of increasing volume or empty spaces between particles, there are largest uh, spaces between particles in gases. So that will be, that will be um, increasing, that will be number uh, last, last in the, in the, in the order. So if we are to order from the smallest, uh, uh, volume to largest volume, it will be from solid, liquid to gas. Smallest volume in solid, greater in liquid, and greatest in or largest in uh, gases. What properties of matter explain the behavior of particles in different phases? in the three phases of matter. So we have the kinetic molecular theory with the following postulates. Number one, all matter is made up of tiny particles. So this is self-explanatory. Everything is composed of small particles. If, if we are to generalize, all matter is composed of the smallest particles called um, atoms. But uh, um, in terms of the three state, states of matter, we, we just... Uh, describe the particles as tiny particles or small particles. Number two, these particles are in constant motion. So even if the so even if the particles are compact as as in uh, the arrangement in uh, solids, there is still movement. Although the movement is limited because of the limited spaces between particles. So it hindi po totoo na na pag solid ay walang movement ang particles, there is, kaya lang limited. 
and in fact the movement is described as vibration so in terms of um, motion mas uh, loose ang arrangement ng particles sa gases at sa liquid so mas mo mobile mas mas magalaw ang mga particles ng so ng liquids and solids when compared to um so liquids and gases as compared to um solids number three the speed of particles is proportional to temperature what does that mean when the temperature is high the tendency of the particles is to more mobile to become more mobile so pag pag umiinit yung particles mas nagiging uh, magalaw sila tumataas ang kanilang kinetic energy so the increase in temperature it means increase in the speed of mas mabilis sila pro 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 proportional po ang temperature sa uh, movement of particles so mas pag mas malamig mas mababa yung temperature tendency of the particles is to move slower slowly Okay, so that's what we mean by a uh, proportional uh, relationship between the speed of the speed of particles and the temperature. Number four, solids, liquids, and gases differ in distances between particles in the freedom of motion of particles and extent to which to which the particles interact. So again, what accounts for this is the distances between the difference in distances between particles. So in summation, what are these property? What are these properties that uh, uh, that distinguish the three states of matter? Let's have number one. In terms of the property volume and shape, gases assume the volume and shape of the container. So since uh, particles are um, in constant motion and uh, free uh, and are freely moving because of large distances between particles whatever is the shape and volume of the container uh, will be assumed the volume and uh, shape of the um, gas particles so whatever they, they assume the volume and the shape of their container same with uh, liquids but um, liquids unlike uh, gases have fixed volume Okay, uh, it, it also assumes the shape uh, of the container that uh, it contains, that, that uh, they, are, uh, they are contained in. And solids also have fixed volume. They also have fixed shapes. In terms of density, the density of gases is low, lower uh, than liquids and uh, solids. Why uh, there's uh, highest density in solids than in liquids and in gases? As we know, density is the measure of mass over volume. So it's the ratio of mass to volume. If in a given space or volume, there are smaller number of particles because of large distances between particles, then you assume that mass is also smaller because the greater the number of particles, the greater the mass. Okay, if in the same volume there are more solid particles than gas particles, then the mass of uh, um, solid is also higher. So this means that the higher the mass, the higher the density. Again, the, 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 what accounts for the higher mass is the arrangement of particles because more particles can occupy a given space or volume, then uh, it gives higher mass the higher the mass the higher the density so in a given space only few gas particles can occupy so since there are smaller number of particles mas mababa rin yung mass noon kasi mas konti yung particles mas mababa yung mas mas mababa yung density so what accounts for the low or high density is the arrangement also of particles how they occupy how much of them occupy a given space or volume Compressibility. Compressibility is something to do with the spaces between particles. The greater the spaces between the particles, the higher the compressibility. So gases are easy to compress. Liquids cannot be appreciably compressed as well as solids. In, mo in terms of motion of particles, uh, as we have uh, mentioned earlier, um, solid particles vibrate because of limited space. In liquids, there is random medium speed because of limited distances between particles and in gases there is random 
faster and cover large distances between particles. So, so this is how we uh, can uh, we can distinguish among the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, in terms of the uh, these properties. Okay. So this is a diagram of solid particles. They are well arranged in this solid, and in fact, it is a crystalline solid. So in crystalline solid, the particles are arranged in order. Particles are essentially in fixed positions. They are closely packed together. What happens as the solid is heated? So let's see the... Let's see the arrow towards the left. So what happens to the solid particles when they are heated? The solid particles will, be, will become uh, loose. The, the, uh, the attachment will become loose. So maghiwai walay sila. They will become more mobile and uh, they, they can flow. They, they will gain the ability to flow once they, the particles are uh, become disarranged or or, or um, uh, disorganized because of the uh, absorption of heat. So solid melts in short. What about yeah? So as uh, solids become liquid, uh, particles become in in a certain disorder. Uh, particles or clusters of particles are free to move relative to each other, and particles are close together. Okay, what about when the liquid is further heated? So you further heat this liquid after, um, after um, being uh, melted, solid being melted to liquid, you further heat liquid to become gas, to become a, a, a gas particles. So, ang nangyayari pag umiinit ang solid particles, nagiging mas mabilis yung particles until such time that they uh, break away from the chemical bond. So they, they become loose, the, the attraction become loose. You add more heat, the attraction between particles in the liquid state is also overcome because of the heat energy. So mas nagiging malakas yung puwersa, yung forces uh, ng uh, particles and they break away. If you contain the particles in a closed container, then they will just uh, move around there, um, tolerating the amount of heat they are absorbing. Uh, in such uh, Until such time, let's say you heat it further pa, ininit mo pa siya ng mas mainit. Pwede yung pressure because of gas law. We have um, this uh, Gay-Lussac's law. Increase in temperature means in, in increase in pressure. If the container is uh, not strong enough, uh, pwede mag yun ng explosion. Kasi dahil sa sombra, sobrang taas ng pressure caused by the uh, extreme uh, amount of heat energy, for example, magkakaroon ng tendency na mag-burst because of the increased temperature that results to increased pressure. So, this is the reason why we don't dispose of uh, e, uh, ng basta-basta na lang yung mga, yung mga aerosol can, yung mga perfume cans, kasi pag nainitan yung mga gas particles na naiwan from the leftover perfume ay pwedeng uh, tumaas ang pressure at mag yun ng uh, explosion dun sa lalagyan or sa lata. Whereas, uh, pag, in, pag pinalamig mo naman itong uh, gas na to, in short, we, reversing the process, the gas particles when cooled, uh, particles will become closer. So, mag, 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 lalapit ulit sila because uh, we, we have the idea earlier, the temperature is proportional to, to um, kinetic energy. So, pag bumaba yung temperature nito, bababa yung kinetic energy, babagal. So, magiging mas close yung particles with one another. Pag, pag uh, inalaw mo pa na bumaba pa yung temperature, uh, let's say, you, it's, it's, uh, it's um, uh, water. Pag pinalamig mo pa siya, nilagay mo for example sa freezer from 30-40 degrees uh, room temperature, pinalamig mo siya, uh, ang tendency ang, ang mga molecules ay magiging mas close pa to one another and such, until such time that it becomes solid. So that's the effect of heat energy.
okay the change in kinetic energy uh, it may be due to the difference in temperature change in temperature uh, increase in temperature means increase in kinetic energy okay to, to, uh, moving on let's for before we go to the next uh, subtopic included in the video let's review the uh, following types of particles number one is an ion uh, we know that an ion is described as any particle with a positive or a negative charge so if it's positive it's called cation if it's negative it's called an ion Another type of particle that we have to take note of before we proceed is a dipole. Dipole is called a dipole because there are two poles. One end of a molecule is positive and the other end is negative. Dipole moment is described as the product of charge and distance between the charges in a molecule. That is represented by uh, the, the figure. We have an arrow. Let's take, for example, hydrogen sulfide or dihydrogen sulfide. The structure of the line, the line band structure of uh, hydrogen sulfide may be represented with uh, the following, by the following. So we have one sulfur bonded with two atoms of hydrogen. So as you can see here, we have the dipole moment where wherein the arrowheads are towards, so halimbawa sa, sa hydrogen, ang arrowhead ng arrow is towards the sulfur. And uh, uh, another arrowhead is uh, towards the upward uh, position. This is due to, uh, number one, uh, the arrowhead towards sulfur is due to the electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electron. Between sulfur and hydrogen, sulfur is more electronegative than sulfur. So the dipole moment is towards the uh, sulfur atom because sulfur is more electronegative. So that's how we represent the dipole moment. Whereas the other the other uh, arrow which is towards upward, uh, this is due to the presence of lone pair. So it's like uh, water. Uh, the the structure of water and sulfur sulfur uh, hydrogen sulfide um, is similar. They they have similar structure. Uh, ang molecular uh, geometry nila is bent. The bending is due to the presence of lone pairs in the central atom, sulfur or oxygen. So what happens is the lone pairs push the hydrogen downward. That's why nagkakaroon ng bending ng um, shape because of the lone pair. So the arrow uh, arrowhead is due to the presence of uh, lone pairs in the central atom. So we have resultant uh, dip dipole meaning there the the net dipole is not equal to zero it's like forces when the net force is equal equal to zero then the object is at a stationary position on the other hand pag may naman resultant force ang tendency ng object is a uh, uh, gumalaw so in this case the resultant dipole is a result of an equal sharing of electrons so we know the meaning of a sharing of electrons this happens when uh, non-metals combine to share electrons. So when sharing of electrons uh, is not equal, the tendency is to um, obtain a resultant dipole. Let's try the following. Uh, can you draw the Lewis structures of the following molecules with the correct shape and uh, uh, shape around the central atom? Number to indicate each bond's polarity by drawing an arrow. To represent the band dipole along each band. Number three, determine the molecule's polarity and indicate this with an arrow to represent the dipole. So it's similar to number two. And circle there um, mm -hmm, to mark, okay, as polar or non-polar. Let's have the first one. The first one is the uh, molecular chlorine or chlorine molecule. So this is the um, Lewis dot structure of molecular chlorine. So one chlorine has seven uh, valence electrons represented by the seven 
uh, dot surrounding each uh, chlorine atom. Lewis dot structure has uh, seven dots surrounding chlorine. So the two chlorine atoms share one electron, share one pair of electrons for to form a single bond. The molecule is nonpolar. Why nonpolar? Because the electronegativity is the same. So when the difference between the electronegative between the electronegativity of two atoms is zero to point thirty nine, then uh, we assume that uh, the molecule has equal distribution of electrons, resulting to a low, too low difference in uh, electronegativity. So this one is has equal sharing of electrons, symmetrical molecule, and therefore definitely a nonpolar molecules. And the shape is linear. Okay. Ah, uh, mukhang nakalimutan natin yung um, arrow dito. Okay, wala pong uh, net dipole dito because dipole moment because dipole moment will cancel out because they have this the same electronegativity. So the tendency for nonpolar like this is to cancel out the uh, dipole moments. For ammonia, we have uh, three hydrogen atom bond atoms bonded with one nitrogen. Nitrogen having one lone pair. So that lone pair results to uh, an uh, resultant dipole. So notice the unequal sharing of electrons. There is a um, net dipole. And that is towards the... Uh, basta pag nakita niya yung arrow na towards saan. Ibig sabihin, towards kay uh, nitrogen. Ibig sabihin, nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So kung ano yung mas electronegative sa kanya naka, nakaturo yung arrow so that indicates that the dipole moment uh, the dipole moment is um, uh, not cancelling out so nagkakaroon tayo ng resultant pagka unequal yung sharing of electrons so that results to polarity of the molecule the shape of uh, ammonia is tetrahedral another is um, chlor uh, bromomethane or methyl bromide. So we have here the same as um, uh, tetrahedral ammonia. There is net dipole. Chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, but bromine is more. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's hydrogen that is less electronegative, or carbon that is more electronegative than hydrogen. That's why the uh, dipole moment is uh, uh, represented by arrow towards the carbon atoms, okay? While between chlorine and bromine, bromine is more electronegative. That's why the arrowhead is towards bromine uh, from a uh, carbon. So there will be net dipole moment, and therefore this is another polar. The shape is also tetrahedral. Same with methane or CH4. So notice here, um, because of the arrangement, uh, this is um, the, the shape of this. The molecule of uh, method is um, trigonal, uh, no, te tetrahedral, tetrahedral. Because of uh, uh, absence of lone pair in the central atom, what happens to the dipole moment uh, as a result of the uh, bonding between the central carbon atom and the four hydrogen atom, the dipole moments cancel out. So that results to non-polarity of the molecule. Let's now answer the question, what holds the particles in solids and liquids? So let's now have the intermolecular forces. What are intermolecular forces? Intermolecular forces are, are the attractive forces that act between molecules or particles in the solid or liquid states. Um, Na-discuss na natin sa Chem 1 ng intermolecular forces. These are the uh, ionic bonds and the um, covalent bonds. So the, the attraction between atoms is called intermolecular Intermolecular is between a unit of uh, substance to another unit of substance. These forces are the forces responsible in the formation of solids, liquids, and gas.
We have several types of intermolecular forces. Number one is the dispersion or London forces. This arises as a result of temporary dipoles induced in atoms or molecules or ordinary nonpolar molecules. This increases with molar mass. So for nonpolar molecules, so for as long as you know how to identify nonpolar molecules, so definitely ang type of uh, intermolecular force, what holds the particles to form that liquid, solid, or gas is the dispersion force or London force. Okay, let's uh, go over the following particles. Letter A is an atom. Letter B, we have... Uh, a cation and an induced dipole. When we say induced, uh, para itong uh, pinilit na isang particle, let's say the particle is positively charged or negatively charged. And then it will be induced by another particle, let's say an opposite uh, opposite charged particle. So in this case, halimbawa, sa letter B, meron tayong um, uh, uh, um, neutral atom and then nagkaroon ng attraction or malapit ang ang um, neighboring um, ang, ang cation there's a neighboring cation so what happens to this uh, particle is it will become an induced dipole so instead of uh, just an ion alimbawa ion lang siya negatively charged particles lang particle lang siya, for example, because of the neighboring cation, it becomes an induced dipole. Letter C, we have dipole and an induced dipole. So, meaning, yung particle may be induced by either a cation or another dipole. So, from letter A, meron tayong uh, neutral atom. Pwede siya maging induced dipole because of the neighboring cation. And then sa letter D, we have an induced dipole because of the neighboring cation. Uh, rather, a, a dipole, uh, pwedeng yung atom is also induced by another, by a dipole. So, pwedeng ang mag-induced sa atom to become a di an induced dipole is either a cation or another dipole. Polarizability is the ability or the ease with which the electron distribution in the atom can be distorted. So the easier for, an, uh, for a particle to be distorted, the higher its polarizability. Okay. Another tap is the dipole-dipole forces. Dipole-dipole forces uh, exist between polar molecules which possess dipole moments. The larger the dipole moment, the greater the force. So if uh, the type of IMF exists between non-polar molecules are dispersion forces or London, London forces between polar molecules, it's dipole-dipole. So we have here a simple illustration. The, a dipole is attracted with another dipole. Another is the ion dipole forces. So we have here between uh, attraction between ion and a polar molecule or a dipole. Strengths depend on charge and size of ion, magnitude of dipole moment, and size of molecule. So uh, for example, we have uh, a dipole here. So that when that is attracted to a, a, an ion, let's say sodium ion or an, an, or an iodide, an ion, so at the attraction between the two is called the ion dipole forces. Another is the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is another a dipole force, but this is a special type of dipole dipole interaction. This is exclusive with uh, three non metallic uh, elements or atoms chlorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay. There. So we have a special dipole-dipole interaction called hydrogen bond, which are exclusive with fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. When hydrogen atom is attached to one end of a small electronegative atom, uh, any of the three, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, it will be attracted to another uh, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen of another molecule, and the bond between the this any of these three and the hydrogen atom of the other particle is called the hydrogen bond so as labeled here we have the covalent bond between the hydrogen and fluorine atom in hydrogen fluoride another covalent bond between hydrogen and fluorine chloride but the bond between hydrogen 
of one molecule and chlorine of another molecule is called the hydrogen bond. So between atoms of hydrogen and chlorine in the molecule is called a covalent bond, an intramolecular force. But uh, the hydrogen bond that forms between the hydrogen of one molecule and the nonmetal of another molecule is called the hydrogen bond. Let's try to answer the following. Identify the types of IMFs or intermolecular forces in each of the following molecules. Number one is benzene. Number two. Okay, let's have number one, benzene. Benzene is nonpolar. So to be able to determine the type of intermolecular force, you have to be able to identify the substance as polar or nonpolar. So if it's nonpolar, then definitely dispersion or London forces. But if it's but but if it's uh, nonpolar, automatically dispersion is a type of force that um, because of polarizability. So take note that dispersion or London force exists in all types of molecules or particles because of polarizability of particles. Only the degree of polarizability differs according to strength of uh, in chemical bond, uh, dipole moment, and other factors that we have mentioned earlier. Number two, uh, dispersion. Dispersion because it's a molecule. It's a, it's, it's a particle. Between that particle and another particle, dispersion exists. But this particle is uh, um, nonpolar. So because this is nonpolar, uh, the type of intermolecular is basically dipole do dipole because but because I have uh, emphasized earlier that uh, dispersion exists in all types of particles or molecules then dispersion also exists between the particles of uh, chloro chloromethane or methyl chloride number three phosphorus trifluoride another dispersion and this this is also uh, polar because of unequal sharing of electrons and the uh, net uh, dipole moment or resultant uh, dipole and therefore dipole-dipole IMF. Sodium chloride, ionic and dispersion because sodium chloride is ionic uh, uh, substance. Number five, car carbon disulfide dispersion because this is uh, nonpolar. There is equal sharing of electrons, dipole moments cancel out. Trying the following between uh, between the following pairs, what type of uh, intermolecular force exists?